Hello, good morning everyone. How's it going? Hi there. I'm Todd Nock, professional comic book artist. So glad you're here for uh, today's art live stream as I've been doing weekday art live streams during this coronavirus COVID-19 stay at home season. I hope you are, if you are staying home, I hope you are well. If you're out there on the front lines, you know, working in, in uh, doctor's offices and hospitals, thank you for all you're doing to take care of those who are in need. Uh, people working in grocery stores and restaurants and delivering things, mails, packages, stuff like that. Thanks for being out there providing these services for us and so many other uh, different types of uh, work. Garbage collectors, thanks for uh, getting out there and picking up the, the trash. Thanks for the hard work you do. And uh, people who are in law enforcement, uh, fire departments, uh, EMTs, things like that. Thanks for keeping us safe. So, uh, and remember to thank these people when you encounter them. The person ringing up your, your groceries or delivering uh, some food, be sure to thank them. First, the, our postal carrier, say, say, say a thank you, you know. Let them know you appreciate the, them being out there and doing what they're doing. But if you're at home, thanks for watching me. And if you're watching this on replay, thanks for clicking the replay. Thank you for watching. Uh, live uh, viewers here, thanks so much for your comments and questions. I appreciate y'all posting. Um, so uh, we're continuing today's, um, or continuing yesterday's. We started the pencil art for this Batman yesterday. And today we're going to do the inks. We're gonna do some nice clean inked lines here using my pigment micron pens. And then the color video should be tomorrow is the plan. So um, uh, we got a lot to do. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna to get to work straight away. So, so glad you're here. Feel free to, uh, to hang out with me. Just readjust the rig. Clamp back in. Blink, just like that. I'll try to respond to questions and comments as we go. But a lot of the focus does go into the art here and into uh, sharing my tips and tricks. But I will try to respond when I can. So, hope everyone's having a good day today. So as I mentioned, I'll be using my microns mostly. Uh, the 08, the 01 are two of my go-tos, as well as for finer, finer detail, the 005. And at times I might incorporate the zebra brush pens, the fine point and the medium point. Um, these are black ink, don't let the color of the barrel uh, confuse you. When I first bought these, I thought this was blue ink and gray ink, and I was like, oh sweet, they're black, but this is fine. Blue is the fine point, gray is the medium sized point, and then there's a black barreled one, and that's a broad brush tip. And I'll probably use a little Pentel pocket brush pen to fill in some black areas. So let's just crack right into this. Now, what I plan to do, because I penciled pretty darkly, pretty tightly, what I'm gonna do is take my kneaded art gum eraser here. It's just this kind of a clay type of eraser. I'm just gonna kind of give this a light erasing just to kind of lighten up the lines here a little bit so I don't have to erase as hard when we're done. So I'm just giving this a light erasing. You can see it just kind of lightening up just a little bit. This is just to help me in the inking stage here. Sometimes uh, when we ink and we have to go erase, sometimes the ink lightens, the light, ink fades a little bit. It's because we had to erase so hard. So if I do a little bit of pre-erasing, it means I don't have to erase as hard when everything's done. So just a, just giving a, a little once over here with my kneaded art gum eraser. But you can still see the details there. The details are still very clear. So uh, let's start with the 08, and let's start in on some of these contours here. I'm gonna start with his head. And we're going to um, be thinking about light source and depth. Right now with these contours, these are the, the main big shapes. Pretty much considering a light source pretty much from above. And considering what overlaps. 
And um, so my, my thicks can, can convey shadow, and they can also convey depth. So the thicker the line, the closer it is to you. The thinner the line, the further, further away is one aspect I think about. And then sometimes uh, the thicker the line might be where the shadow is, and the thinner line is where the light is hitting. So those are two key elements that I think about. It's not like it's that way 100% of the time. Sometimes it's just about depth. Sometimes it's just about lighting. Sometimes it's about both. Sometimes it might be about neither. I can get a little variation in line weight with the harder I press down on the pen, I can get a thicker line and the softer I press down the, a, a thinner line. So I can get a, kind of some nice thin lines here, even with a thicker nibbed um, micron here. So I don't have to rely solely on the 01 if I want a thin line. I can get a thin line just by applying less pressure. If I apply more pressure there to get a thick line, because this part is going to be filled in black later on, and this part as well. That's called spotting your black. In the industry, we call that spotting a black. That means that's a spot where you're going to fill in black. Some spots are so small, I go ahead and fill them in right away. So something you always, uh, or I like to always think about, and you might want to do the same with your illustrations, is I think about each section, each section of the face that we have, the ear, the neck, the shoulder, the folds, the wrinkles. All these things are things I'm constantly thinking about as I move from one element of the character to the next. And how do they all fit together? Because they're each individual units that build a whole. A W-H-O-L-E, <laughs> not an H-O-L-E, not like a hole in the ground, but a whole image, a, a complete image. Darn synonyms. Or is that a homonym? Whole and whole are homonyms. They're not synonyms, they're homonyms. Homonyms are two different words that have the two different words that have the same sound like deer and deer d e a r and d e r e Homin a synonym are two similar words two words that mean similar things like 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 great or amazing or terrific All right, and that's uh, a fade there. Remember, yes, if you saw yesterday, we were talking about the in penciling about the fade, black art, white art. Uh, this here is to convey a sense of gray shadow. Because in the early days of comics, with the limitations of printing options compared to what we have nowadays, thanks to computer printing, uh, camera-ready artwork had to be either black or white. So if we wanted gray, or if the artist wanted gray, I keep saying we because I am now an industry professional, but when I broke in, it was switching over to technology was taking over, so it wasn't the old, olden days of printing happening so much anymore. Uh, but the, the, the legendary comic book artists and creators like Jack Kirby or uh, John Byrne or um, Will Eisner, you know, they had to think in black and white. And so, so to create a sense of gray, they had to do these kind of uh, fades. And we still utilize that because it's a very, uh, many artists, we, we still do this because it's such a classic um, and recognizable comic book look. It's those details that can be really fun to look at and see. So we still kind of incorporate that. So we got the cape overlapping his shoulder here. Bring it all the way to the 
front of his neck there. And the cape, as we mentioned yesterday, it, uh, and if you, did, if you missed yesterday's live stream, it's still here on my channel. You can go back and watch episode 068 and see the pencil art for this after we enjoy today's inking live stream. And you'll hear my tips and tricks and thought process as I, um, as I penciled this illustration. So we're going to have a little shadow underneath his chin there onto his neck. And we have the far side of his cape draping over the other shoulder. So I'm thinking, keeping in mind the, the, the folds of the cape and the shadows it would make on the black cape. So I think of his cape as black, but I leave these open areas for some, what will bring in some nice dark grays as the light hits his shoulders. And cowl here, his mask. Okay, now I want to work on this side of the face because it overlaps that shoulder, so I want to make sure I have the right line weights for his face. In fact, we'll push the camera in a little bit closer so y'all can see the details of the face here. So I switch to the zero one so I can have more control of my line weights. So I'm gonna finish off the contour of his face, the outer line. Then we'll do the inner part of his mask and face. Look here at the nose. Now the mask pulls down the side of his face. Now for even finer detail here, I'm going to switch to the 005 for the um, for the finer points of his face here, the finer details here. I want to have even more crisper control of the line. So I switch to the 005 for now. So I want some real nice tiny lines and shapes here. So we can see the detail of the arc of the eyebrow and how it bends up into the shadow of his forehead. the upper eyelid, the shadow of the upper eyelid. So even though he's wearing a mask, we really like to make it form-fitting because comic books can be very representational. So we want to be able to show emotion in Batman's face. We do similar things with Spider-Man. Even though his whole mask covers up his face, we can still manipulate the eyes 
to convey emotion in a in a in a mask that would potentially and essentially would make Peter Parker slash Spider Man emotionless. You know, we we shouldn't really see emotion on his face. I thought they did a great job in Spider Man Homecoming. Was it Homecoming? I think it was in Homecoming, where they uh, or I guess was it Captain America Civil War, where well you know when we introduced got uh, Spider Man introduced into the Marvel universe. Marvel Cinematic Universe, I should say. You know, the, they came up with technology that explained why, why, why Spider-Man's lenses could change shape, which I thought was a really fantastic idea and really allowed to bring that comic book aspect to the movie in a very believable way, which I thought was a great idea and I thought that was very clever and, and really, really made sense for the motion picture, for the movie universe. Um... Because we get to we get to, we get to play with reality and we get to bend the rules of reality in comics, which is something I really enjoy. It's fun as both a creator and as a reader of comics. That's why I enjoy comic books, is because there are aspects of reality in it, but then there's such wild and creative and imaginative and 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 just stuff that we don't get to see in real life. That's why it's a fun escape is because it's stuff we don't see in real life. And that's why I enjoy it. That's a, a huge aspect that I enjoy about comic books is that we can let our imaginations run wild. We can, we can let our imaginations play in a world that is not like the one that we live in. If I want real life, I'll just go out my front door. But when I go into a comic book, I want to go to a fantasy world that, that mirrors the world I live in, but then breaks a lot of rules. So, um, and, and in comics is we get to be, like I said, representational. That's a key part of it. Because if this was just like real life, then, then the, a lot, then I think it might not be as much, well, I know at least not, might not be as much fun for me. I want, I want the fantasy of it all. I want radioactive spiders. I want dark nights protecting the streets. I want strange visitors from another planet. Trying to help humankind with their amazing powers. Fueled by a yellow sun. I want super soldier serums and gamma bombs that create incredible hulks. I want cosmic rays giving astronauts superpowers. I want mutants born with an uh, with an X gene that gives them gives them superpowers. That's, that's fun for me. Got to give him that scowl. He is not the happiest of guys. I think the last time Batman was happy was in 1966 on the Adam West Batman TV show. So when I create a fade, I think thicker lines from the black going to thinner lines 
coming out to the white to create a nice fade and gradation. As I've said in my other videos, th these lines have a reason. There, there, there needs to be a reason for these lines. If I just threw these lines down in all sorts of different directions, it would convey more Batman got beat up. He had a tough tussle and he's all beat up. That, that's what that would look like. But if I want detail lines that don't look like he was beat up, then I want to consider the shape and form and light source. So that it, 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 it's, it's communicating to the, the reader, the viewer, what is being translated here. So they, they are coming away with the understanding of the shape and form of Batman, the, the environment that he is in. All right, so I'm going to switch back to my 08 micron. We can finish off the cape over on this shoulder here. Oops, am I a little off screen? I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. I was just doing that little bit of line right there. Okay, we'll fill that in black a little bit later. All right, let's work on this arm over here. So we have where the arm connects to the the bicep connects to the uh, pectoral muscle. We'll deal with that pectoral muscle a little bit later on. And that shoulder, that shoulder muscle, we just see the tip of it coming down right there. We have the uh, tricep muscle pulling down to his elbow. Now, I like to put wrinkles as I mentioned I, uh, yesterday in the pencils, I like to put in these wrinkles at the joints. I think they look cool and they're fun to draw. So I switched to the zero one for some nice crisp wrinkle lines here. A little fade right there at the uh, shoulder muscle. Some nice crisp lines here to detail the um, tricep. And we have that bicep. See how these detail lines, they curve. They're curving, they're showing the curvature of the muscle, even just subtly. Same with these lines. I'm translating the, the, uh, the shape is the is the key thing is to translate that shape. Start to sculpt out the forearm here. Still using that zero one for the moment. Okay, maybe another little wrinkle right there as the wrinkles kind of bunch up. Now we're going to start to move into his forearm and fist. Now, because the fist is overlaps his forearm a little bit, I want to really focus on getting these shapes done first. So we'll start with a thumb over here, an index finger. As I mentioned yesterday, I'll often look at my hands whenever I need to draw hands. I'll look at my hands as reference, I'll make a fist and study how the fingers fold. and the shapes that they make so that I can translate that. Into lines. 
How do the fingers overlap? How does the thumb overlap? What are the angles that are made? And remember yesterday I had mentioned the knuckles arc. They are not straight across the fist. They arc up to the, from the index finger up to the middle finger and then down ring finger and then pinky finger. Most times. We have the back of the hand here. Gonna have some dark shapes here into his um, his fingers. Since these are dark colored gloves, it's kind of where the fingers overlap. Just kind of like that. And then wrinkles kind of around the wrist here where the cloth is bunched up. And the cloth, or the glove, I should say, the glove arcs around his forearm. So I keep in mind the shape of the forearm. It's not a straight line across, it's a curved line. I want it to curve around so that it gives Batman some mass, some form, shape. And we're going to put the dark parts in on the forearm part of his glove. Keeping in mind the muscle striations and groupings and shapes. So it's like you really got to study those shapes. You got to study the shapes. Study your anatomy. So you know what shape you're making each striation here. And back to the 0, 0.8 micron here. I go back to the 0, 0.1. We'll do that. These fades here to keep those fades consistent. All the while thinking, how is... What direction is that muscle? What direction is that shape of his glove? What is the angle? What is the shape and the angle? Get these little uh, fins, these bat fins. Over here on this side. Yeah. 
and let's see, we have some fade right through there. A little bit here through the fingers. Just like that. Okay, let's uh, work on this, uh, this pectoral muscle here. It's going to have a nice darker shadow because of the size and shape of the pectoral muscle. Really want to ground it, switch. So I did, did this shape here with a 0, 8. Now I switch to the 0, 1. I'm going to just kind of create a fade like that as it fades to kind of open here at the, um, as it heads towards the center. Speaking of the center, we'll just drop in the center of his chest. A little shadow through the armpit there. That lat there. down the side of his body towards his belt. Gonna need to w deal with this knee here pretty soon because it's in the foreground. Let's look, work a little bit on his, more a little bit more on his torso, his kind of ab area. And the muscles here on the side. Some of the wrinkles around the body, his waist where it bunches up. All right, we're going to switch over to work with his knee right now because it's in the foreground. It's overlapping a lot of his body here, so I want to make sure um, it gets dealt with appropriately and gets the right line weight so that it pops off. I'll use thicker lines here on the knee, especially the outer contour for sure, because it's closer to us in the foreground. So this is a sense where the thicker line does not convey shadow as much as it is looking to convey distance. Because if my light's coming from above, you would think there'd be a thinner line there. But I don't want too thin of a line there because I want this knee in our foreground. So this is one of those moments where, you know, I, earlier in the show I said, um, I consider depth, how things are close to us in the foreground, middle ground, or further back in the background. Thicker lines for foreground, thinner lines for the background, medium for the in-between, but then also for uh, shadow. So if, if something's tucked away here, I'll have a thicker line for a shadow. Absolutely. And that's the only thing I'm really thinking of here is just shadow. But here, the main thing and almost only thing I'm thinking of here is depth. Sometimes it's one, sometimes the other, sometimes it's both or varying degrees, percentages of what I'm thinking of. So probably here I'm thinking 90% depth and 10% light and shadow. Where here I might be thinking 100% shadow. So there's a lot to think about. Our brains are always working. If you're a professional comic book artist, your brain is always working, always thinking. The thing is we practice so much, it becomes second nature, it becomes muscle memory, 
So we're, sometimes I'm thinking about things when I'm not even realizing I'm thinking about it. That's how frequently I have thought about it, I have practiced it, I have done it, so that it is second nature. It is automatic. Put some wrinkles here in the at the knees. Got those wrinkles there. Got that little shin bone. But I'm still thinking about light and dark. As I add details here inside the knee, I'm thinking more shadowy, a little more, more open and more of the light. Switch to the zero one micron here for some cross hatching at the knees. So, so much is just thinking about shadow, light, depth, shadow, light, depth. That's, for me, that's pretty much what line weights mean to me. Back to the 0 0.8 micron for some nice thick lines as we want to really keep this, this leg, this foreground leg, um, very prominent. in the foreground. And I can always make lines thicker. If I ever make my lines too thin, you'll, you've seen me adjust here. I'd, I'd be working on this, the, this knee and now all of a sudden I'm adding thicker lines to this forearm. Sometimes I do that. You know, I'll just go and I haven't looked at a section for a while and I come back, you know, I've been working over here and then I notice this over here. I have a fresher eye and it's like, oh, I can add a little detail here. Or, oh, I want to add a little thicker line there. That's just kind of the uh, <laughs> the dog the dog aspect about me, you know. Uh, I think about many artists. I think because we think so much, our brains kind of are jumping all over the place. I don't know if that's the same for other artists, but it, sometimes I can be a bit impulsive as to what I'm focusing on, and then all of a sudden my brain goes, "Oh, think about that thing over there for a second, then come back." Can be dangerous because I might forget a, 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 a section I was working on or an aspect that I was working on, but I don't think it's gotten me into too much trouble yet. But you know, sometimes it's just that working on something, then all of a sudden, squirrel, like Doug the dog from Up. It's not unlike that. So we get this calf muscle here, just like that. Add some of these uh, detail lines to the shin uh, shin bone area, for lack of a better term. Some fade right there, that black section of his boot. And we have this deep Shadow right here on his shin. A little bit of a nice dark area here on this inside calf muscle. Fill that in black. I like to put a nice thick outline. Just kind of beef up the inside of that shape so that when I go in to fill with black, I have a buffer for the brush. I'll need to ink this uh, part of the building here soon, but before that I want to take care of this whole section here while I'm thinking about it. Don't want to get distracted by the squirrels just yet. Got to stay focused. It's okay if I get distracted, but uh, I need to. I want to make sure I, I get all this before I get too far into another section. So now we're going to put in the details of these pouches. 
So I'm using the 0, 1 micron again. So I can get, so I can build up the line as I want. Seeing people, uh, I think I saw people um, asking about colors. Uh, color video is tomorrow. Join me for the color live stream tomorrow. There will not be time to color this today. Uh, right now, uh, for my live stream um, program guide, is uh, Mondays and Fridays are post-it note, pop art illustrations. Tuesday through Thursday is a three-part fuller figure illustration like we're doing here with Batman. Tuesdays would be sketch and pencils. When, uh, Wednesday would be inks, like we're doing right now. And then Thursday would be colors. That's the plan at this time. Because we want to devote appropriate amount of tension, uh, attention, uh, an appropriate amount of tension. Let, uh, let me see that line. Take three. An appropriate amount of attention to each stage. We don't want to rush the inks. We don't want to rush any aspect of this. I want to do the, the best work I can. And so I want to give the art and the details all the time and attention I can. So so yeah, there's no way we could do the inks and colors in a reasonable time today, so. All these detail lines, I'm still thinking about what is the shape of that muscle I'm working with, or that part of the body. Let's see, let's do a fade here on this uh, black part of his shin. Just like that. Now while we're down here, let's go ahead and ink in this part of the building so that we have the can maintain the right amount of depth. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna use my triangle here, one of my drafting tools to get nice straight clean lines. So I want a nice thick line here at the top to complement the thickness of his leg here because this is closer to the foreground than his leg. But his leg is closer to the foreground than this. It's, it's all depth. But here on the back side, his back side here, bit of a darker uh, line because I'm thinking of shadow. So here's a moment where I, even though this part is further away than his leg, this part is further away from the light. So there's a shadow. So it's this really weird dance between thicks and thins, light and dark, depth and uh, foreground, middle ground, background. Um, so the rules are always changing. They're a bit wibbly wobbly. So it's not like a hard science. It's, it's like science meets magic. How do we translate the world? How, how do we represent the world in this illustration? Because logically, one would think, well, that line should be thinner because his leg is thicker, but it's that not that far in the background, so there's shadow because it's so far away from the light. So that I, I, I need there to be um, a stronger contour there uh, to really ground Batman. So it's in, in this reality. So so there's so many different, like I said, so many different things we think about. I'm gonna do a little zigzag texture here. It's not really a, quite a zigzag, it's a kind of almost like a... I don't know what you'd call that. I don't even have a name for it. I guess I've always thought of it as a zigzag in my head, even though it's not a diagonal, it's up and down. So yeah, this is that along those lines of sometimes it is 
solely about depth, sometimes it's solely about shadow, sometimes it's about both. And each aspect of what we're illustrating calls for those thoughts depending on where we're at. Also, keeping in mind where we are re relationally to other aspects. So now for the brick texture, I'm just gonna kind of do a little broken line here. Um, for the mortar of the bricks, just to give it some texture, I want them to look all criggly craggly. Those are official terms, criggly craggly, at least official terms in my studio. The criggly craggledies of the bricks. I want these to look old and weathered. That's where the criggly meets the craggly. I don't want them to look pristine and new. Gotham is a is a gritty city. So uh, so I want these, and now we'll come back the other way for the. So I'm just kind of lightly letting the the nib bounce across the the triangle onto the paper, thicks and thins, broken line, to make it look weathered and textured. Because if we look at bricks in real life, especially older bricks, they are not perfect, perfectly smooth rectangles. They are, they are grainy and granular. They have a rough texture to them. That's where the, the criggledy meets the craggledy. It's science. That's where science is meeting magic. See, so just a few lines like that. <laughs> Easy for me to say. I've been doing this for many, many years. But it's just that, that practice where it becomes second nature. And then we're going to add, add some... Just go ahead and render out all the, 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 the weathered texture here. So back to the zero one. Sometimes we think, oh, backgrounds are so hard, they're no fun to do. And sometimes that's very true. But if we continue to study and practice and learn perspective and, and look at real life, look at real life buildings. When I go to New York City, I am taking photos of building after building after building for, for my own personal reference. So if I want to draw a specific type of NYC building, I got it right there. And I, I do that con every year. I hope we get to do it this year. We'll see if COVID-19 will allow us to start up conventions by the end, uh, you know, by the fall. I hope, I hope, I hope. I'd hate to miss New York, my trip to New York. But, um, but I'll take photos and, and have reference. And you can Google image search, you know, search buildings, New York City buildings. And, and look at the rocks, look at the, or, or look at the bricks, look at the textures, look at the stones, some are stone buildings, and, and look at it and, 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 and study the textures, study the trim, and then, and then replicate that in your style, in your way, with your representational choices. And, and the more you do that, the more the, the world, not just the character comes to life, but the background, the building comes to life. A cool shot of Batman doesn't mean much if, if, the, if the background he's standing on and the world he's in doesn't, isn't at the same level as, of, of attention as, as Batman. I often feel that way. It's all one cohesive um, whole. Co cohesive illustration. It's a, it's a whole world. The, the Batman is, is as important as the background. All right, so let's uh, work on this side of, of Batman. We're going to get to that bat here soon. Right now I want to keep working on our main contours and musculature. Back to the 08 micron. 
So you've probably noticed I, I, I switch back and forth from the 08 to the 01 very frequently, depending on what it is I need to, to um, ink. There's lots of different types of tools we can use to ink. I'm, I'm a Micron guy just because that's kind of what I've used all my life because that's what I had access to. Some people use uh, dip uh, crow quill pens with uh, nibs. I know a lot of inkers do. That's one of the, that's been like the the standard for inking for decades, and a lot of the best top inkers still still work with that, um, and and they do phenomenal work. I I've, I've played with that. I need to continue to study that tool and practice with that tool, um, so I can have that in my art arsenal. But I've become so f proficient with my my coat with my microns, I should say, that this is. Um, you know, it's like, this is what I know the best and what I work with the best and, and my editors and publishers, you know, uh, expect from me. It's like, they know I can deliver here. So I, I don't want to change that up just yet, um, before I'm ready. But, um, but if you work with crow quill dip pen and nibs, then that's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. A lot of the same, I mean, all the things I'm talking about here apply to whatever tool you're using, whether it be brush whether it be um, crow quill nib and pen to the zero one for that fade of his far bicep. But I, I, I am instructing here with, with uh, microns because it's what I know best. It's what I've trained myself in for the past many, 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 many years. Well, Definitely the past 10 years. I've been doing my own pencils and inks for since 2010 was when I felt I was proficient enough at doing inks that I was able to ask my editor if I could try inking a Spider-Man short story. And they said, well, let me see some samples of your inks. Let me see what you've worked on so far. And I showed them some covers I had inked and uh, some personal pieces. And my editor thought, yeah, he goes, yeah, it looks cool. It looks good to me. Go for it. This, it's an eight-page Spider-Man short story. Give it a whirl. And, um, and he was really happy with it when it was done. And I had fun. And I really enjoyed the process. And I learned a lot and continued to learn more about how I could pencil and ink on a timely fashion. And so it just kind of kept, it kind of snowballed from there. I really enjoyed seeing the line art all the way through from pencils to inks. And, um, and kept at it. And so I continued to, my skills continued to evolve as I became, began, began inking my work on a daily basis professionally. It's like my inks were good enough for me to get the job inking myself, but then they continued to evolve and develop as I I worked and I learned new tricks. I became more confident in my skills, even more confident. That's why we say, or they say, it is said, I should say. That was a really odd line um, that I just said, not that I just inked. Um, it is said that uh, one does not have to be perfect. Their art does not have to be perfect to get into comics. It's got to be good enough for an editor to take a chance on you. That doesn't mean do a, a, a half job. Don't just like, well, I can just phone it in. I, I, I don't have to seek to improve my skills beyond a certain point. It's just saying that sometimes we think, oh, I'm not ready, but, and so I'm too afraid to show off my work yet. And it's like, that might not be the case. I know my skills were what I was, were super amateurish when I first started taking my portfolio to conventions, but they had to be. I had to show my portfolio for editors to tell me what to work on. You know, I had, the internet did not exist back then. I did not have the resources that we have nowadays. So I had to look to, you know, I had to go to conventions, show my portfolios and get those brutal critiques so that I could see what I needed to work on and what I needed to level up. And at 18 years old, it was everything. I had to level up everything. The first uh, 
critique was so brutal. So, so brutal. So we're going to do the wrinkles here at the, at the knees again. So don't let perfectionism stop you. I have struggled with perfectionism pretty much all my life. Still something I can struggle with. But there's, a, I think, a fine line between perfectionism that is toxic, that brings about discouragement, and there's, conversely, a desire to make your skills better, which I do not believe that desire is necessarily perfectionism. I don't think of it that way. I think perfectionism is this unrealistic, now, mind you, this is just my opinion, is an unrealistic expectation of achieving some level of perfection that I don't know if it truly exists. Um, but I practice not to be perfect. I practice to become more confident in my skills, to do the best work that I am capable of. And I think that's that's uh, different than, than perfectionism. Um, I have a drive to be better at what I do, but when I took out the idea of perfection from the equation, I found that I was learning better and faster when I wasn't carrying this unrealistic expectation of perfection. And I think that's, that's, that's the battle we fight with, is what is an unrealistic expectation? Because that can really, I think, get in the way of what it is we hope to achieve. When I thought, I'm going to focus on having fun and doing the best work I can and see what I learn along the way. I found that I had more fun. I found that I was actually learning and growing at a better rate than just beating myself up because I didn't do it exactly the way I expected it to be done or that I should have done it and, and just, just, just really kind of just, like I said, beat myself up. That's... You know how you kind of just beat yourself up with your inner thoughts? I thought, this isn't getting me anywhere. If anything, it's killing the fun. That's this, That's not right. So I had to, I kind of learned to reformulate my expectations and my perception of what I am doing here. And when I sought to have fun, allow myself to embrace the challenge, come success or fail, because... It will be one or the other, or a little bit of both. That's okay. It's okay if it's, it's a, if it's a failure, because I can learn from the moment, learn from the experience, and apply that to the next attempt, and maybe I'll be a little bit better, and it won't be a quote-unquote failure. Now, that's to say I don't feel a negative emotions. Absolutely, I do. I'm a human being. We all do, and that's okay. It's like, but what do I do with it? How am I going to let this set my course? Is it, am I going to let it be toxic and just bring me down? Or am I going to let it be a positive thing that where I can allow myself to have grace on myself, which is very difficult to do because perfectionism wants to get in there and, and just trounce me. But am I going to try to have grace on myself? It's like, ah, missed the mark, but I'll do better next time. I'm going to try again next time. I'm going to try again tomorrow, and I'm going to try to do maybe just a little bit better, if I can, and then a little bit better the next day. I'm going to try. It might I might succeed. I might fail. You know, a lot of this happens incrementally over the course of a, a, a lot of time. We kind of don't see the progress until it's you know, we work on something, we just keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it. And then you kind of look back to what you did like three months ago, a year ago, two years ago, and like, whoa, wait a second. This is different. This is different than what it was. I didn't even realize how much I had learned, grown, and changed. Because you're kind of in it each day, you know? It's like when you... Like if you have like a, a niece or a nephew and you, you only see them like once a year, it's like, holy moly, you grew so much, you grew so much. I haven't seen you since last Christmas. You know, it's like, yeah, you weren't there each day to watch them grow incrementally bit by bit like the parents were. 
So sometimes it's hard for us to see things in the moment. But when you look back on the past, it's like, whoa, look how far this journey has taken me. Because it really is a journey. And we learn and we grow as we go. Learn and grow as you go, everybody. Learn and grow as you go. Sometimes you have big growth learning moments where it's like a, a major change right away. Or like you just like, whoa, something just really big clicked for you. But those are kind of few and far between. I think a majority of it are these little micro moments that accrue that we don't realize. Until we look back at our sketchbook or some artwork we did months or even years earlier and see, whoa, things have changed. I've gotten better at drawing hands. My line weights are better because I tried a little bit each time, incrementally, bit by bit by bit by bit. So that's where I think we have to have grace on ourselves and be mindful. Are we, are we letting perfectionism, a toxic idea of perfectionism, discourage us and keep us from drawing? Because that's the worst thing that we can let happen to us is to allow perfectionism to stop us from drawing. Because if we get so discouraged that we stop, then we're definitely not, we're definitely not having those micro moments, you know? And if you've let discouragement stop you, totally understandable. And it's okay to have felt that way. But my encouragement to you today, maybe pick up a pencil and do a little sketch. Do a little sketch of something. Draw a little Spider-Man head. Just a little something. But go in with the, with the idea of, I'm going to have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to see what happens. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. That's okay. No one has to know. See if you can find the love for drawing again. Because I think it can still be there. Don't worry about the time that's passed. Just look to the time you can invest in now. and get back on that journey. The road's still there. Just uh, hop back on it. Hop back on and, and keep going. And see what develops, because you never know. So we've approached this leg similarly as we did to the other leg. Thanks for letting me kind of share a lot there. I hope that might be an encouragement to some of you out there. That definitely was a life changer for me many years ago when I kind of realized these things and, and decided to make some choices in my head and heart about how I feel about my art. And it's made all the difference. Like I said, I still have negative emotions. I can still get caught up in toxic ways of thinking. I do not do any of this stuff perfectly. But one thing I have learned is that when I catch myself thinking or feeling negatively, I can choose to stop that way of thinking. It's not always easy, but there have been times where I was like, whoa, 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 what am I thinking? What am I doing? I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to go have a bowl of Apple Jacks. I keep saying I have a go and have a bowl of Apple Jacks. I have not had a bowl of Apple Jacks since like, 1992. Um, I'll go have a snack, go for a walk, maybe check my email, do a little something, maybe read a comic book, come back with a fresh eye, and it's like, all right, let's, let's get back to work. But this time, we're coming with attitude, having some fun, and seeing what develops. So now we can work on this other forearm here. We got this fist here. Different angle of the fist than the other fist. So we're gonna we're gonna work on this here. Switch the zero one micron. We're gonna start with this thumb because it overlaps all the other fingers. So I want to work foreground to background.
So we're going to hit those knuckles, kind of doing the outer contour first. Kind of throw in that, that wrinkle there in the gloves, kind of right at the fingers where the fingers bend. So we get the, uh, the main shape and the bend of each finger as those fingers curl into a fist. Little shadow at, to separate each knuckle. And then we're going to kind of put some shadow here inside each finger. Putting the darker shadow here where the fingers bend towards the fist to really give them a solid state. Leaving a gap in between each finger for when I come in with the gray color tomorrow. If you just tuned in, welcome. Just doing inks on Batman today. If you missed the beginning of the live stream, that's okay. It will be available for replay, so you can come back and watch again. Start from the beginning, trying to share as many tips and tricks as to my inking approach as, as I go. In fact, I need to get a drink of water. I'm starting to get a little hoarse. I've said a lot of words so far. I've said a lot, a lot of words. Got the meaty palm of the part of the palm right there. Put a shadow there. Then we have this part of the palm. So these will all be filled in black. I'm going to put a few of the little fade lines here, those little detail lines, kind of pulling from that dark part of the, the, the glove shape, just to keep it consistent. We have, we want to wrinkle up the uh, wrists of these gloves, again, to maintain consistency. I have those inner arm striations. Where's my zero eight? We got some big shadow chunks here. Got a little wrist bone. Do a little bit of this, like that. I'm gonna take my zero one micron and do the fade. Yeah, so I was saying, if you just tuned in, welcome. I'm doing uh, today is the Batman Inks Day. Uh, if you missed yesterday, where we did the pencil art, you can still watch that live stream here. Tomorrow for Thursday is Color Day, so we will add color to this illustration tomorrow, and we'll do that for upcoming weeks. Uh, Tuesday pencils, then Wednesday we'll ink that illustration. Thursday we'll color that illustration. Mondays and Fridays will be post-it pop art.
illustrations like I had been doing for these coronavirus stay at home live streams. You're always to welcome to draw along with me. Try your hand at drawing either this shot of Batman or your own shot of Batman. If you want to come up with your own pose, own location, go for it. I highly encourage that, absolutely. So we got his little bat arm fins there and a nice dark shadow to separate them there. All right, so. A little more shadow underneath those pouches there. The utility belt. So let's let's hit that, uh, that bat, what do we say? Now where is my other drafting tool? Here we go. I want some really nice, crisp, clean lines here. These, this bat is kind of curved. So I'm going to use my French curve here and use the different curves on this French curve tool to help me construct a crisp, clean bat symbol. So the nice thing about a French curve is that all around it are all these different shaped curves. So I just find the right curve that lines up with the curve I've penciled in. So it works kind of like a ruler, but instead of straight lines, it gives me curved lines and it's called a French curve. Come in multiple sizes and shapes. This one is my go-to. I use this one very frequently, both professionally and in my art live streams. So it just gives us those really, really nice, smooth lines. Drafting tools are a comic book artist's uh, go-to here. Because we're not just illustrators, we're also drafting. I use these for backgrounds. I use these for certain, certain elements that I need to, to draw. So if you want to be a comic book artist, make sure you have French curves. T-square, triangle, um, circle and ellipse templates, compass. Not, not like a north, south, east, west compass. Not that kind of compass, but the kind that lets you draw a giant circle with the pen and the pencil bit. You, you might have used one in a geometry class. That kind of compass. That's what I mean for somebody to go out and buy a magnetic compass and it's like what am I supposed to do with this I know where north is but I don't know how that helps me in this illustration so I want to make sure I'm very clear about that tool Will I do digital art? Um, yes, I will probably do more digital art live streams in the future. Um, not sure when, but I'm bound to. I've done a few. Hopefully you've seen the ones I've done so far. If not, they're in a dedicated playlist here on my channel. Just search, just look at my uh, playlist section and find the digital art um, playlist folder. And you'll see the, I think I've done maybe three or four, uh, maybe five digital art live streams. All right, so all this is going to be filled in black a little bit later on when we get to that point. But we are not at that point yet. Now it's cape time. So this is what we've been got going so far on Batman here. Quite a bit. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is a long one here. This live stream's a long one. But like I said earlier, want to devote the time and attention to this illustration 
and my skills in rendering Batman here to do the best work possible. And sometimes doing the best work possible takes time. It takes time to do it to do it well, because I want to do it as, to the best of my ability. And I don't want to rush anything here. So if it means we go for two hours instead of one hour, then so be it. Still using this French curve so I can get some nice, clean, clean uh, lines to the cape. It's okay to do it freehand if, if you prefer, or if you don't have a French curve, totally okay. Sometimes I'll do it freehand. But I really like what I can get with a French curve if I have my French curve handy. In fact, I broke my French curves for my travel uh, case, for my comic book convention case, so I've got to get new French curves for when convention season starts back up again. I also need a new uh, circle, big circle protractor template thingy. So I'm considering the, the pull of the uh, wrinkles of the cape as it kind of pulls from his shoulder down. That's one of the things I'm thinking about. And then also, how is the cape folding? So like here, the, the cape is folding over, so we see the back side of the cape. And then we have the inside of the cape here, so there'd be a bit of a shadow cast. A little shadow here from behind there. Would I do a Lost in Space, space character commission? Um, it's possible. Um, it's all, that's always a possibility. Uh, I have not watched the current Netflix uh, Lost in Space show yet, but I did watch the old 1960s one. They had that in reruns when I was a kid, um, back in the 1980s. So I have seen that one. Um, I have seen the original. Uh, I really like the original. Um, but I uh, have not had a time to watch the new Netflix version one yet. Which I need to. I've heard good stuff about it. So Batman's cape has these uh, kind of uh, bat-like um, wing texture here. Kind of the points, the, the points to his, his cape. Let's see, double check my shadow here. The shadow can help frame Batman. Darker on the inside of the cape. And then that darkness gives us, gives the, the more open parts of the artwork more pop. So capes have been a great framing element for drawing characters. Well, I'll be doing another one next week. I'll be doing another illustration next week, different character, probably on a sketch cover. And we'll, I'll check my sketch cover collection and see which, see which title inspires me to draw which character. I have, a, I have a handful of sketch covers of different comics, Marvel and DC. I think I have some Doctor Who ones as well. So yeah, so new character next week. Uh, Tuesday will start that next big full shot. Mondays, when, Mondays and um, Fridays are post-it pop art. So I'll be drawing on post-it notes on, on Mondays and Fridays is the plan right now. All these, 
these programming days are subject to change, but right now, this is the first week that I've made the implemented the new new programming schedule. The different types of art for different days. And more than likely we'll do it again next week and then we'll go from there. So we have the cave kind of blowing off here to our right hand side. So I'm considering how the cave will curve. As it moves down his back and off to the side. So we have the cape coming over his back and then it's flipping back around this way. So I'm going to want to utilize some French curve action here as the cape folds back over itself this way. Kind of wrinkles up and flips back over this way. And we're going to have a heavier shadow as underneath the fold. Under the flip, the flippity flop. kind of a fade here. And then finish off this one little chunk of cape. Just like that. We add a little bit of darker shadow at the pull of these uh, cape wrinkles. We'll come in when we do the colors tomorrow. We'll use a Copic color. We'll have a lot of dark grays all up in there. Okay, so um, now we're just going to kind of finish off the background here. We just have another little building here and then these faraway building, buildings silhouetted in the background. So not much more here to do to finish off the inks. So taking my triangle again. And for this part of the building, it's a little further back. So I'm not going to go as thick of a line as this one here because it's a little further. It'll still be a bit of a thick line, but not quite as thick. The, the, the variation of line will be a little more subtle. There will be some thick lines to indicate shadow, though, as the ledge overlaps certain parts of trim. Still have bricks on here, some bricks, so there will be a little bit of that criggledy craggledy, as I had mentioned on the other portion of, of building earlier in the live stream. If you missed it, please 
Come back for a rewatch so you can catch it all. I didn't really pencil these in yesterday, but I'm going to go ahead and ink in some brick-like texture. I'm just kind of eyeballing this because I've done it a bajillion times. So I feel I can confidently get those bricks in proper perspective. Yes, this will be the new, uh, newer gray and black suit, yes. Gray bodysuit with black gloves, cape, cowl, and boots. And then we have these back these buildings in the background here will be silhouetted black. Create a little buffer there and then all this will be filled in black. We have buildings over on this side here. Oops, so sorry gang, I didn't realize that was off screen. I just inked those parts. Doing a nice thick line because I'm going to fill this all in black. So I want a little bit of buffer so that when I come in with the brush, I can keep it all the black within the lines. I think what I'm going to do is uh, put a fade here. It's going to take a little more time, but I think it'll be kind of a cool effect. A little bit of a fade. So it's coming from black and then fading to cross hatching. Can just kind of get things started there. That's black, that will be black. And then for cross hatching, I want this to be really organic cross hatching. This will allow us to kind of discuss a new texture here. So just concentrating the lines. Darker, more concentrated here, less concentrated as we move down. Then some diagonal lines. So her vertical, horizontal, then diagonal each way. So I want it to fade from black, almost creates a gray, a sense of gray. But this is creating that sense of gray in a different way. So let's keep this fade going. Really wanted to have kind of an organic look. That's why I'm doing it freehand. Darker here as we move dark to light. Darker up top, lighter as we move down. Some vertical lines, more concentrated for the darker area, less concentrated as we move away and down.
you can make your your cross hatching fade as dense or as sparse as you desire. Some diagonal lines now. Just a lot of crisscrossing. But keeping in mind the density of the fade, the direction of diagonal the other way. There we go. So that creates a little fade there just to kind of break up the, the, the black shape behind um, Batman here, which is more for framing purposes. Now that we've had time to ink the whole thing here, I want to see that I want to add a little more thick line to the top of his head and bat ears so that it is a little more, a little more consistency so that the head pops off the shoulders a little bit more. As I always say, you can always make th lines thicker, you just can't make them thinner. Well, you can with white paint, but we often don't want to go putting a bunch of white paint on our illustration. So it's easier to start thin and then always make them thicker if they're not thick enough. All right, gang, we are moving towards the end of this uh, process. What I need to do now is, uh, what I wanna do is take my eraser, we're gonna erase, finish erasing all the guidelines here, and then we'll fill in all these blacks, and then the inking stage will be done. So I'm gonna come in with my uh, Prismacolor plastic eraser here. Just about any old brand of eraser will do. I just happen to own one of these. Just gonna lightly erase out as much of these guidelines as possible. Wanna erase gently, don't erase too vigorously. Erasing gently can keep the black lines from fading. Oops, I forgot to do the, uh, the fade there. I'll have to go back and do that. See how I did the fade on this side? I forgot to do that side. Sometimes I discover things I forgot to do when I go to erase. So I'll have to remember to do that here once I finish erasing. And you also want to make sure that your ink is dry. That's why I wait and fill in all these blacks after I ink. I'll put in my signature there after we finish all this. I don't know where that goes. Here momentarily. Now I will be coloring this, so even if some of the, the lines don't come off of the page, that's okay. The color will overpower, like those blue lines and stuff. They really won't even show up. Once we get the colors going. And stuff, some stuff will be co co covered by black, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Okay, so now I've got that done, I want to come in here and finish that part I forgot. The fade of the pectoral muscle, pulling from the black into the white open area. All right, let's see, then we'll take the, uh, oops, that's not my, where is my, ah, there it is, my Pentel Pocket brush pen. I'm going to fill in all the black areas. And my general rule of thumb is to start at the top and work my way to the bottom so that I don't risk my palm smudging any ink. So I like to work from, because I'm right-handed, I work left to right, 
top to bottom. Oops, so oh, sorry, gang. Just filling in the forehead here. Didn't realize I was out of camera frame again. My apologies. So just very gently filling in the black. And this is such a fun part because then it's like the character really starts to come to life. It's like he starts to become more solid. The blacks really bring a, a solid, solidity. Does that mean it's the right word? A nice solid effect. Some places where I filled in with Micron, I'll go over with a Pentel brush pen for a little more solid, vibrant black. More consistent black. Now we got the bat here very cautiously. Bringing the, the brush ink to that Micron drawn line. There we go, that finishes the bat. Boom, that's a big black bat. Now let's uh, fill in these parts of his cape, the underside of his cape. Oh, and then we have his uh, these meaty parts of his hands and fingers that need to be filled in. Let's see, then we have, let's see, this part of the building. Chose to just kind of leave a couple of windows there. Just so the there's a little more detail in the background there. Just kind of a last minute decision. And if I realize I don't like them, I can always cover them up. But I kind of liked them, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them there. Not much more here, just a little more buildings and one more boot, and then the inks will be done. calf muscle and then the shin. Boom. Something I forgot to do was just add a little bit of a scraggledy texture to these bricks. Then uh, my name here. And 
And then we'll have the date right down here. We'll go ahead and put in the year. We'll fill in the day and month tomorrow after we finish the colors. Oh, thank you. There, I had one spot that I forgot to fill in black and an eagle-eyed observer caught that. Thank you so much. Good job. Thanks for having my back there. Good eye. Good catch. So, there we go. Let me pull the shot back here so you can see Batman in his entirety of the work we did today. Inks. There are the inks for this Batman sketch cover. Batman issue 50 sketch cover. A lot of people ask, where do you get these sketch covers? Get them at your local comic shop. Call your local comic shop. Ask if they have any sketch covers for sale. Um, a lot of comic shops also have an eBay store, so you can find them on eBay. Sometimes I find certain ones on there, and they can ship them to you. So um, that, that's where you can get them. And most of them uh, can, you know, you can get one of these for maybe about, cheapest I see is usually around five bucks, which is about cover price. Some go up as high as 20 bucks, depending on uh, availability, or if the comic book is out of print. So yeah, there we go, there's Batman. So much fun, so much fun doing the inks on this one today. So um, thanks for all the props, everyone. Thanks so much for that. So glad you like what I'm doing here. Let's flip the camera around and we can uh, wrap up today's live stream. All right, let me uh, plug back into the rig here. Gang, awesome, so good to hang with you. This was a bit of a longer one. We, we went about an hour and a half, just over an hour and a half. But like I said, if we wanna do the art right, sometimes we gotta take the time. We're gonna put more uh, time and effort into it. And so these Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday live streams where I do a fuller figure, they're gonna take longer than doing a, a post-it note headshot. That's just because we've got more to think about, more to work on, more to do. So um, that's, that's, that's how it's gonna go. And um, yeah, so tomorrow is Copic Color. We're gonna color up Batman. We're gonna use a lot of gray. Light gray, dark gray, a lot of gray is gonna go into this bad boy. So um, I gotta make sure my Copics are, are freshly filled. So join me here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's 12 noon if you're on the Eastern uh, time zone. And if you're international, uh, 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, so hopefully you can calculate your time zone from there, 4 p.m. Greenwich Time. But um, yeah, that will be tomorrow, and I'll schedule this uh, live stream here later tonight. So if you have your notifications set to alert you when I schedule a live stream, you should get a notification so you're sure not to miss out. If you just discovered me, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future live streams and uploaded art videos. If you like what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Live viewers, thank you for all your comments and questions. I'm so sorry I couldn't catch most of them because I was so focused on the inks here, but I do appreciate y'all having uh, conversations here while I draw. And if you're watching on replay, feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comment section below, and I'll have a shot of Batman here on my social media. So Twitter, Instagram, Art of Todd Knock Facebook page, all the links to the social media are listed below, and I'll have a direct link to this image on my Instagram in the video description below to come. So gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope y'all had a great day. And um, yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll do it all again tomorrow as we crack into colors. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope y'all are doing well. Please stay safe during this coronavirus time. Keep those hands washed. Wash those hands. And um, yeah, let's be careful out there. Let's hopefully we can get past all this real soon and get back to as much of a normal life as possible. Um, so gang, I, I got to roll, but good hanging out with you. And um, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care. Stay well, everyone. Bye-bye.